Dr. Beisner, I've talked to a number of uh, climate experts and, and you know, terrific people like Mark Morano and David LeGates and others that, that, that have pointed out some of the nonsense. But you start from a little bit different perspective, and I really love it. You start with a view of stewardship. Certainly you understand science. Certainly you understand the facts and, and all of the details. But your purpose and motivation is a little bit different. You're here to be a good steward of the planet for God Almighty. Can you explain how that brought yeah. you into this? Yeah, well, you know, as a, as a Christian believer, I take Scripture seriously. Scripture tells me that God created humankind, male and female, in his image, and he blessed them. And he said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and everything that moves on the face of the earth. This is a, a Hebrew sort of a poetic structure there uh, where this shows everything, okay? Human beings are supposed to have dominion over everything. Now, back in 1967, uh, a, uh, an environmentalist uh, who was actually also a medieval historian uh, Lynn White published an essay in Science Magazine in which he blamed Judeo-Christian worldview for ecological devastation. Mm. And that got reprinted in uh, dozens and dozens of anthologies in environmental science used all over the world. And he claimed that it's because of this verse, that this verse uh, Christians and Jews interpreted as giving them total license to just abuse nature any way they wanted. Now, of course, you can go back through the whole history of pre-Christian rabbinic interpretation and post-Christ Christian uh, interpretation of Genesis 128. You never find that. It's a complete caricature, right? But what we did at the Cornwall Alliance was we tried to figure out, okay, so what should this dominion look like? Granted that we're made in God's image, what did God's dominion look like? Well, he started with nothing and he got everything. <laughs> he brought light out of darkness, life out of non-life, order out of chaos, greater order out of lesser order, great variety of life. That's what our dominion should look like. We can't bring anything out of nothing, but we can jolly well bring more and more out of less and less. And as we do that, we reflect God better and better. So we came to sort of summarize the idea of dominion as enhancing the fruitfulness and the beauty and the safety of the earth to the glory of God and to the benefit of our neighbors so that we're fulfilling the two great commandments to love God and to love neighbor. That's what we're supposed to do. And God has given us the minds and the hands to be able to do that. And that explains, by the way, theologically, why we're not running out of resources. Even at the same time that we're growing in population, we're not running out of resources. Resources are less scarce now than they were a couple hundred years ago because people make resources. As the late Julian Simon, Simon put it, the ultimate resource is the human mind. Made in God's image, connected to our hands, we make more and more out of less and less. And that's why the long-term inflation-adjusted cost of resources is downward, not upward. They're, they're less scarce, not more, over time. Well, and the notion of stewardship is that it doesn't belong to us, but we're responsible for it. Right. And that is a statement that we have to take care of our planet. It, it would be ir irresponsible to purposely destroy the environment. But yes. helping people out of poverty is not destroying the environment. It, it is actually using the resources God's given us. Thank you.